I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. The federal judge presiding over E. Jean Carroll's trial against Donald Trump let Donald Trump's lawyer know that if Trump continues to make these posts on his social media platform attacking E. Jean Carroll, attacking the case, violating previous court orders, then Donald Trump could face criminal exposure for his conduct. Specifically, Judge Lewis Kaplan, the federal judge from the Southern District of New York presiding over this case said to Donald Trump's lawyer Joe Takapina that you may need to start looking into some of these United States statutes, obviously referring to the obstruction of justice crime. So how did this all begin? Well, earlier in the day, Donald Trump posted about E. Jean Carroll and posted about the case attacking both and violating prior court orders, which basically precluded him from saying these types of things inside the court. And while Donald Trump has refused to show up so far to any day of this trial and likely will not be showing up at all to this civil trial, which by the way, it's a civil case, so he's not required to show up, but it definitely will be having an impact on the jury to see Donald Trump not there. What the court basically views Donald Trump's extrajudicial statements, these statements made on his social media platform as trying to do end run around the court order. So while he doesn't show up in court, court, he makes these statements that he would not be allowed to say in court based on motions precluding it as a way to try to obstruct the proceedings and manipulate the jury. And so here's what Donald Trump posted earlier in the day on a social media platform. He wrote, the E. Jean Carroll case, Miss Bergdorf Goodman is a made up scam. Her lawyer is a political operative financed by a big political donor they said didn't exist only to get caught lying about that. Just look at her CNN interviews before and after the commercial break, like a different person. She said there was a dress using the old Monica Lewinsky stuff, and then she didn't want to produce it. The dress should be allowed to be part of the case. This is a fraudulent and false story, witch hunt exclamation point. And just to break that down right there, Donald Trump was the one who really refused to provide evidence uh, regarding the dress in the first place. And so there were motions that were filed in court. Donald Trump's lawyers had the opportunity to make their arguments, but there could not be information about what uh, may or may not have been on E. Jean Carroll's dress. And additionally, there's not allowed to be information about a so-called political donor that they said didn't exist that's funding the case. And um, the judge precluded that um, from coming in as being overly prejudicial and uh, irrelevant. And frankly, the way Donald Trump characterized it here is false as well. So there were two orders by the judge basically saying that information could not go before the jury. So what the judge sees Donald Trump doing right there, and this is what E. Jean Carroll's lawyers uh, pointed out to the judges, He's just trying to get the jury to see these posts to get an evidence that the jury is not allowed to see. Donald Trump made another post, by the way. He goes, they got caught lying. The Miss Bergdorf Goodman case is financed by a big political donor that they tried to hide. Does anybody believe that I would take a then almost 60-year-old woman, woman that I didn't know from the front door of a very crowded department store with me being very well known, to put it mildly, into a tiny dressing room and her? She didn't scream. There are no witnesses. Nobody saw this. She never made a police complaint. It was seen there with a woman, big press scam, he writes. So um, when the day's proceedings began, E. Jean Carroll's lawyers uh, brought this to the attention of the court. Um, and, the judge and the judge said to Trump's lawyers the following, quote, Donald Trump for three years refused to give a DNA sample, and now he wants this to be in the case. The judge went on to say that Trump seems to be trying to communicate to his supporters or even perhaps jurors about issues that aren't supposed to be part of the case. And Joe Takapina then said, well, oh, we'll, we'll go tell Donald Trump not to do that anymore. We'll tell him not to do that. 
But then what happened right after that is as E. Jean Carroll was getting ready to testify and E. Jean Carroll did testify today, I'll tell you a little bit about her testimony. Eric Trump then made a post because he saw his daddy make a post and Eric Trump wanted to show how tough he was. So Eric Trump posted this and he wrote, zoom out. Gene Carroll's legal battle against my father is allegedly being funded by political activist Reid Hoffman, co-founder of LinkedIn, a civil lawsuit being funded by a billionaire with no direct involvement in the case out of pure hatred, spite, or fear of a formidable candidate is an embarrassment to our country, should be illegal, and tells you everything you need to know about the case at hand, dot, dot, dot. And again, the judge had made a ruling that who's helping pay the legal fees is totally irrelevant um, in this case. And there was a motion that addressed that. And Judge Lewis Kaplan, the federal judge presiding over this case, had already warned Donald Trump's lawyer and gave him strike one. Um, and here, now this was pointed out um, to the judge as well. And they showed um, uh, the judge these statements that were being made. Um, and E. Jean Carroll's lawyer said, look, this is what's taking place. And then so Judge Kaplan issued a warning to Trump's lawyer, Joe Takapina, um, saying that the posts could be placing Donald Trump and his son Eric in harm's way. And that's what the judge said. You know they're putting themselves in harm's way right now. And then the judge said this to Takapina. If I were in your shoes, Mr. Takapina, I'd be having conversations with your client right now. There are some relevant United States statutes here and somebody on your side ought to be thinking about them. So the judge is saying there, there are criminal statutes. And specifically, I believe the judge is talking about obstruction of justice, but he's telling Takapina there and Takapina understands the message that's being sent. If I were in your shoes, you should be talking to Donald Trump and Eric Trump right now because there are some relevant United States statutes here and someone on your side ought to be thinking of them. That there's now criminal exposure in, the, in this case. So E. Jean Carroll's case is a civil case. Um, then the judge is saying, well, you could be turning this civil lawsuit into a criminal case if this conduct uh, persists. And by the way, um, there were other aspects too where Donald Trump's lawyer tried to get in very inflammatory information about E. Jean Carroll. Um, and here's one of the things that Judge Kaplan said when Takapina was being very sneaky about it and trying to imply that E. Jean Carroll is a, is a racist and he wanted to kind of put in hearsay prejudicial information that E. Jean Carroll is a racist. Um, the judge said, the underlying reason is not coming in. It is a subject on which the unfair prejudicial effect outrageously outweighs any probative value to a mixed race jury in New York. It is outrageous in my opinion. Then Takapina says, I've got your ruling. And then Judge Kaplan says, I know what you're up to. And Takapina goes, I'm trying to defend my client to not hear the, you know, to try not to defend my client. And then Kaplan goes, you're entitled to your opinion, but it is not mine. All rise. And then E. Jean Carroll went back in for her testimony. So E. Jean Carroll testified for most of the day. The first witness was an employee at Bergdorf Goodman at the time that uh, put forward the layout of the Bergdorf Goodman at that time and how celebrities like Donald Trump could go unnoticed and that it wasn't like a rare occurrence to have someone like that in. And they were given their privacy in certain rooms, like the section that Donald Trump and E. Jean Carroll were in. And E. Jean Carroll testified, and from everything that I'm seeing and reading, did a pretty good job. I mean, it's very hard, hard to testify about uh, conduct like that and what she endured and what she experienced. But seems like she did a very good job. Towards the end, she kind of broke down and, and started crying too when she was asked certain questions um, during her examination. Um, you know, And then the next witnesses up are gonna be other individuals who she called at the time and talked about the events with. 
Um, and in addition, you'll then play the deposition of Donald Trump, and then you'll play the deposition of other women who have experienced uh, the same type of conduct by uh, Donald Trump. Um, and and um, I want to say that E. Jean Carroll's lawyers so far have put forward a, a pretty compelling uh, case. And E. Jean Carroll did a very good job on the witness stand. And, and Joe Takapina, and again, Donald Trump's lawyers not knowing the law of holes. They just keep on digging. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. So hit subscribe right now. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch. Uh, in addition to our Patreon site, wherever you get audio podcasts, subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast as well. Thank you so much much for watching and hit subscribe on this YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. Let's get to 1.5 million subscribers together. I'm Ben Micellis. Have a great day. Love this video? Then you'll love the Midas Touch podcast. Listen as my brothers and I break down the latest news and chat with top political leaders on the fastest growing pro-democracy podcast in the world. New episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. Add the Midas Touch podcast right now wherever you listen to your podcasts.